Comrades, I am Admiral Andre and welcome back to Kerbal Space Program. Today's episode represents the culmination of our Apollo journey and it is time for us to do a moon landing, finally. So let's put everything together, comrades. We uh, have the craft, now we just need the plan. So for that, I'm going to have a look again at Google Images. There is a specific image I'm looking for. And once we are done looking at that, I will meet you on the launch pad with our final Apollo version. Now, in this case, the only thing I've changed since the version 1 save is I've made the center engine of the first stage not gimbal. Basically, I just locked the gimbal there because uh, one of the comments actually shared that information with me, which I appreciate. That actually helps me out there. So that's basically all I've done. Then we're going to test this thing and hope for the best, comrades. So uh, I'll see you in one moment. I'll wait for you on the launch pad. Ah, comrades, this is an excellent image here showing the whole flight plan of Apollo. I'm not sure which Apollo, but I'm sure they all basically had the same idea here, so it really does apply to all of them. Let's have a look at this. I mean, if we're doing an Apollo mission, surely we should follow the Apollo mission profile, at least as closely as we can. So we are going to launch, of course, and uh, let's just have a look. There's the second stage uh, ignition. Just need to see where the thing scrolls here. Then the launch tower ejects, then the S4B will ignite there and place the craft into an orbit, a parking orbit for system status checks. So at that point we are going to do all of our planning of course, our trajectory to the moon. And uh, let's just have a look, 100 nautical mile orbit. Now I have no idea what that is, but let's find out. So 100 nautical miles is 185 kilometers. So we'll be looking out for 185 then. Of course we don't have to do any of that, but it should be fun to add some of those elements to our mission. So then uh, reference alignments and all sorts of things happen, computer updates and everything. Then the craft uh, reignites here, the S4B engine, and it sends the craft to the moon. So after the parking orbit, then we have the translunar injection. And let's just have a look. There's the engine cutoff trajectory confirmation. Now at this point, what I'm going to do is I'm going to have us set a collision course for the moon. I'm not sure if that's what happened on all of the Apollos. In fact, I don't think it happened on the very early ones, but it, uh, as far as I know, happened on the later Apollos where the uh, S4B would impact the moon, basically. So it's a way for us to get rid of that debris. So, of course, then we have to extract the LEM there and uh, then complete the rest of the burn with the RCS, that will be the easiest. Navigation sightings and all of that, we won't worry about that. We won't even need a mid-course correction, of course. We'll plan the whole thing out. And then we arrive at the moon in a retrograde orbit. So that's where our free return tra trajectory is going to come into the picture. So retrograde, then we, uh, of course, ignite the engine and place ourselves into an orbit of 80 nautical miles. So let's have a look at what that would be. Hmm. That's 148 kilometers. Now, for me, I think for, for the scale of Kerbin's moon, that's a bit too high. I think we should go for around 30, maybe. Hmm. Unless we do go with this, but that's really overkill. That's a very, very high orbit when we look at the scale of the moon. But maybe we could do that. 148 and the other one was 185. Then the navigation sightings and all of that. Of course, the LEM then separates and uh, begins the trip down to the surface. Now, we know where we're going. We have the rover there already. Then they have all sorts of instrumentation that they place on the moon and, uh, and then they do their uh, lunar EVAs and uh, basically, you know, fulfill all of the scientific aspects there. 
Of course, in our case, it would be easy to attach a very small scientific payload to the lower stage of the limb that could then decouple as well. But I wonder if that would really be necessary because we could attach some scientific instruments to the lower stage of the limb but that's going to stay behind so there's no reason for us to detach it of course we also have some instruments on the rover itself so this is really a secondary aspect of the mission so now we go over to this one then we have liftoff and of course we meet up with the uh, orbiting CSM there then let's just have a look. Of course, then they ditch the, the lunar uh, ascent module stage there. And they begin their trip back to Kerbin in our case. And there's another mid-course correction, which we won't need. Let's just see. Anything else to look out for? Then there's another uh, mid-course correction. The sixth one. Good grief. Then the command module and the service module will separate and we will have the orientation for re-entry and then finally re-entry and splashdown. So comrades, that is our plan here. We're going to follow this roughly and uh, see how we go. So let's get into the game comrades and fulfill our destiny and make history here. Comrades, here we are. We are ready to go. And uh, as you can see, I've added a few more graphics mods here. They seem to be working well. The only thing I could not get to work was the scatterer mod. For some reason, it really doesn't like this craft. I think it must be some of the new parts that uh, confuse it somehow. Because the entire sky turns either orange or purple and the ocean disappears. Now that's a bit of an overreaction to new parts, but uh, there you go. Now you can see we have our uh, flag here, the Design Bureau. But on the craft, we have the American flag, as it should be, comrades. So in that case, we will be planting the proper flag on the moon. In terms of that actually you can find this flag well there's uh, several mods that actually allow you to add additional flags to the game but you can also do this yourself of course all you have to do is resize a flag to the appropriate scale and uh, for that you can just look at the existing flags. So I think that's it comrades this is a suitably dramatic moment Jeb, Bill and Bob are ready so I think with that I'm going to probably not speed this up but I'm going to definitely add some music for flavor here however wait stop for a moment just stop I think I was being a bit hasty now you can see without scatterer the whole planet looks a bit purplish here but that's just because I don't have all the mods that these uh, stock visual enhancements require. But I can't add them because of the whole scatterer issue. But in any case, let's just have a look. Where do we want to land? We know it's going to be here. Zero for degree, whatever the case might be there. You can see all the information there. But now, of course, when Apollo landed, there, this, uh, well, the particular area that they chose for the landing was just basically past sunrise and the reason for that was so that the shadows would be nice and long and they could actually see how far they were from the ground now in this case we've missed the window here because it's full-on daytime here and by the time that we get there in well one Kerbal day or so it will be even more towards high noon so we won't see any shadow so I'm going to have to speed this up now. I'll just have to uh, take the craft off the launch pad. That's a bit of a false start there. But then I'll wait till the moon is in the proper place, which is what we're supposed to do in the first place. Hmm. Going to have to uh, be more patient, I suppose. Oh, well, I'll see you in a minute, comrades. Right, comrades. I'm wondering if this is not a bit too early still. Uh, you don't have to worry, Jeb, Bill and Bob, I did uh, rev not revert, I actually recovered the rocket there, so they were not waiting there for days and days. Uh, but in any case, we can see the Terminator is, uh, well, it's quite hard to see here, but I would imagine it's somewhere right there now. Because we can clearly see at that point it is still night. But by the time that we get there, it should be very early in the morning. Which is what we want. We want long shadows there, but not 
shadows that are setting, shadows that are rising. So uh, at least we'll never be trapped there at night. So I think maybe I'll just fast forward it a little bit more. Not much though. Just like, uh, oh dear, let's go a little bit further. Okay, just there. So now we go back to the space center and prepare for the launch. Comrades, it's a nighttime launch, but that's okay. Our Kerbals are always uh, ready to go. Let's just have a look. Yes, mm, okay, well, it looks like it's just after sunset here now, so it's not really that late at night. So I'm sure we would still have massive crowds. Yes, you can see the sun was just setting there. So the crowds are waiting, comrades. It's time to make history here. Now, uh, it's going to be unfortunately a bit dark, but I did boost the ambient light levels a bit. Let's just have a look under the settings again. Here, ambient light boost, 14%. Maybe I'll put it up to 32. Yes, just for the sake of the recording again, then I'll put it back to 14. So comrades, this is it. I will meet you when we are ready to plan our orbit to the moon, uh, our trajectory there. So wish us luck. This is it, comrades. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1...
Well, comrades, uh, there's a few things I would like to improve here. At least it was quite a successful launch, I must say, but I accidentally pressed the, the Z key, not the X one at the end there, so we overshot our orbit a little bit, but that's uh, not a mission fail, I think. Also, the number 5 key did not actually turn off the center engine on the first stage, so that's something I'm going to have to go back and fix. I don't know why that's not working. So they were pulling a few Gs there, but I'm sure they are still very much enthusiastic about the whole thing. The other thing was I just added the spider engines onto the same stage as the upper, well, S4B engine. Because, I, I don't know, it doesn't really matter, but putting them now on a separate stage to simulate the sort of Eulich effect is a bit overkill. Because then, uh, you know, it, it's almost like now, before we can launch it again, we now have to reactivate those engines and turn this one off and all of that. But you can do that with various hotkeys, of course, if you program that in beforehand. But it's not really necessary. So they're still there. They're still pushing the fuel down. But of course, in our case, we see it all instantaneously. So, uh, well, some shortcuts, I suppose, are in order, comrades. In any case, we are here. We are here, uh, roughly. Uh, we're slightly higher than we intended, but that's okay. We should have enough fuel here, I hope, anyway. I cut off the uh, second stage a little bit earlier because we were on our way to the 185 and I didn't want to reignite that one. So I just dropped it off. Let's hope that doesn't cost us the mission. In any case, we set our target as the moon. What's our inclination? 0 0.2. Hmm. Let's just have a look. Where would we need to burn? Now, of course, we are looking for a free return trajectory. So now we just have to mess around with this thing. You see right there, that's where it was. We can have a look at this. This is not a good one, of course. Not yet, anyway. We see we get the effect. We're going to approach it there, then go retro, and then swing around. But there's a few problems with this orbit. The first is it's not appropriately inclined. That is to say there is an inclination when we don't want one. So we'll just have to play around with that a bit. If it's not working properly, then it's... There we go. Just not the wrong one. Or the right one. Now, after this, do we add or take away? I think we take away. No, we add. Okay, wait. We're not quite in the right place. Sometimes you have to play around with this thing, but in the end, you'll get what you're looking for. Mm -mm. You see, it's closing the gap there again. There, let's try there. Yes, 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 now we're getting somewhere. So right now it's 25 kilometers. Of course, there's a slight inclination again. That looks decent. So really what we're looking for is the figure 8. So we're going to come around here, swing around the moon, and if necessary, come back home. Now the problem with this orbit is we'll be coming straight back. So uh, it will be necessary to burn our engines again to actually place us in a more acceptable re-entry uh, orbit here, or trajectory anyway, because we'll just plummet right into the atmosphere as things stand. Let's see if we play around with it. We can also tell this thing is not quite optimal because the periapsis here is not directly opposite the moon. So it should be about right there. So let's play around with this thing a little bit. Okay, comrades, this one is a little bit better. We still have way too sharp a re-entry back to Kerbin. But uh, that's why we will have to make those other corrections that they showed in the diagram. In any case, we just want to get this part right. If we have an abort, then we will burn either the main engine there, the SPS, or of course the lander engine like they did with Apollo 13 to put us on the appropriate return trajectory. But we do have the free return. So let's just play around with this a little bit more. This is of course why we want to be in a nice parking orbit. So definitely that is too little. 
Now the other thing was what? 148 kilometers. I think that's overkill really. We should go for I would say between 15 and 30 kilometers. Let's do 30. That's a nice safe distance without being too ridiculously far away. Although again in this case we're just going to actually go like this. I should uh, not get ahead of myself here. We just want an impact but barely an impact so it takes almost nothing to get us out of one just like that now we have our plan our maneuver is ready so we'll just place ourselves on the appropriate orientation and uh, then wait the required 12 minutes Good, so this thing of course the beta burn time mod will count down to say when exactly we have to start the burn. I have to say without Scatterer this mod, uh, this stock visual enhancements thing is really lost. But uh, okay, anyway, it's really about the higher textures for the moon. That will make that a bit more pleasant. So this will be, uh, I see, a little bit longer. Definitely don't want to get this one wrong. Okay, now it's counting down. Three, two, one, ignition. So, of course, now we could have ignited the spiders first and then the main engine, but that would also make the calculations here a bit more difficult. But uh, then again, it's really up to you, that part. But this is just more convenient, still practical, but also we have that Ulich engine. So we wait, we wait comrades. The time of history is drawing near. Also the time of destiny to tell us whether we have enough fuel in this stage, but I do believe that we will. We can see it's going down very slowly. Let's hope, let's hope, otherwise this is an abort. How are things inside? Hmm. This must be very exciting. Come on, tell me we have enough fuel. It's just this lower stage, 350 now. That will be enough. Let's hope, let's hope. At least we could say we're being quite efficient with the fuel. Although not so much with the uh, second stage that I actually threw away. Oh, don't bite me in the backside. Please, please. 140, 130, 120, 110, 100. Yes, we'll hopefully make it. Come on, 60, 50. Cut it. Okay, with 41 liters, I always assume this is liters, but anyway, doesn't matter. Units, 41 units of fuel left. And we are on a collision course with the moon. So now we can safely detach from the S4B stage. I have to say, this thing is throwing me off. It's way too purple. It's, the blue is all washed out, but anyway. Now we turn our gaze to the moon, so away from Kerbin anyway. So in this case I'm going to F5 comrades, anything can happen, the game could crash or some strange cosmic disaster could happen, so let's, uh, let's not tempt the Kraken here. Now I think for convenience sake I'm just going to turn prograde, shouldn't change anything about our encounter. And then comrades it's time to detach. So we are now finished with the S4B. It has done its duty. Now the next step, uh, step, I'm mixing stage and step into one word, but anyway. Stage 8 here will uh, separate, of course, the uh, CSM and the fairings. So in this case, I guess we could leave the RCS and all of that on. Let's go. Okay, that's a very smooth detaching there. Uh, of course, these fairings should be going outward, not forward so much, but there's nothing I can do about that. At least we get the nice effect of the four panels. So now I want to turn off the RCS and the SAS first. Press number one to deploy our antennas and turn on our RCS. 
Then all I want to do is turn around. So minimal, minimal RCS use here. Also just set as target so we have a reference point. This should not be too difficult. Hey, yeah, yeah. There's a lot riding on this. Okay, begin countering it. Okay, SAS back on and lock to target. That will make it easy. Just need to cancel out the uh, little bit of movement that we have. But essentially that will be it. It's not quite there, but it's close enough. I want to show you, if we look inside here, we can actually see the capsule approaching. This is so excellent. I love this window here. We can imagine putting a little target for ourselves there to uh, line up properly with, just like the real thing. We're coming in at a very odd angle here. Let's just try and fix this. Uh-oh, things are not working properly. We have an emergency. What are you doing? What are you doing? You're costing us the mission here. Uh-oh. Okay, we have problems, comrades. We have real problems. This was now my faffing about that ca caused this. Now the thing is in a rotation as well. Okay, turn off the RCS. You're messing it up. It's going to impact us, though. Now we have a crisis in orbit. Good grief. First of all, I need to just get us to a chase camera because I was at the locked one. The locked one. I need to know which way the RCS thrusters are going to fire. Now, turn off that nonsense. Okay, it is going to swing around now, so we'll just have to wait for it. I do hate the way the RCS works now, since the latest two updates. It never stops moving. You see, it just keeps going and going and going and going. It makes docking much more difficult. There was a comment a while ago about uh, using one of the uh, reaction wheels or the reaction wheel authority on the capsules, but just setting it to SAS. So we still have to move manually, but at least it will keep us locked into uh, whatever orientation we want. But uh, I don't want to use that. The other option, uh, the comment, I can't, I don't know who said it anymore. I really can't remember who made the comment. But uh, the other option is to use the RCS build mod or build tool mod to help us with the whole thing a bit more. But this is pretty balanced here anyway. We had a look at that before. It's just now the whole way that it locks on and then keeps moving. Anyway, our target is coming around now. Sure, the astronauts of the real Apollo missions were trained to deal with this scenario. Of course, that's why they did docking simulations like crazy. Anyway, we have to get closer right now because it's swinging around again. We can't miss it again. Hey, yay, yay. The other option is a spacewalk to get to the other side to stabilize it. I, I could just time warp, but I'm not going to do that. That's a cop out. Okay, we're coming in now. Okay, we're pointing the right way. Come on, come on. Oh, good grief, we're missing it again. That's not going to work. This is a disaster. Okay, we're going to have to do an unconventional space walk here. Just lock, please. Stop making all these moves. You're making it worse. Actually, I'll have to reverse, otherwise the thing is going to hit me. Well, well, this did not go as planned, but uh, 
It is going, I suppose. So who's going to do the volunteering here? Stop moving, for goodness sake. Paul Kerman, you're the engineer. You're going to do this one. Good grief. It's the spin on the, the, the S4B that's the problem. But I have done a test like I said I would since the last episode and I got that one right. Of course when it's on camera things have to go wrong, but so be it. We'll find new ways of solving the problem. So in any case now we were supposed to do the docking and then detach, but in this case we'll just press 2 to extend the antenna and uh, then detach. There we go, it was again the fairings that were in the way there. Then we are still moving here. have to turn on the RCS of course. Or are we actually on the wrong stage? That's interesting. Okay, but don't do nuts, nutty things now. can never trust the RCS anymore. Right, so what's the thing now? This is a practice for the docking in moon orbit, but in any case, we want to set that as our target. And then we want to place ourselves in an appropriate orientation. I'll transfer monopropellant from the upper stage or the CSM again. Oh man, what a disaster this has turned out to be. Cancel it out, please. Of course, with the lower stage attached, this thing was never meant to dock. It was only with the upper stage. But anyway, I just want to get it roughly in line again. Okay, zero, zero. Now just keep it like that, Bill. This is your order now. Now we go back to these guys waiting and uh, we have to just get ourselves pointing the right way. Hmm. Kerbin is holding its breath now. Wasted a lot of monopropellant but we have a lot so it's okay. This is why we do tests and practice. We needed more practice, comrades, but we're okay. Right, so lock that in right there, please. And now I just have to cancel out the relative motion, which is much easier here because the RCS is more balanced. It should actually be almost perfect. At any rate, there we go. Let's make it half a meter per second. We can watch the thing again, although I should not faff about too much. It's almost like doing... Uh, which Apollo was the one that tested both of these in low urban orbit or low Earth orbit? I'm not sure. Hmm. I know Apollo 10 took the whole thing to the moon and uh, almost made a full moon landing, but it was just the dress rehearsal. So it must be Apollo 9 then. Okay. That'll do. Perfect. Okay, comrades, now we're back on track again. Good grief. Hmm. Turn off the RCS and let's take a moment to evaluate our situation. We are still on a collision course, so we need to do something about that. And to do that, we just need to find our either our retro or prograde. This does not matter. I see the ret uh, prograde there. Actually, we want the retro, so I'm going to let it swing around. We can just take bull back now. Or, you know what, he can stay there, because 
it's already in the configuration where they can now use both spaces as uh, room while they travel to the moon. Just get ready to stop this rotation. Just turn this off as well. We don't want to be burning that RCS on the lander. Okay, now all I have to do is burn forward. You can actually look at the map view. This is such a small burn. It's very easy to do. I am going the wrong way. Oh man, things are not going well. This is Apollo 13 all over again, comrades. I'm going the wrong way. Can you believe it? Eesh. Mm -mm. What did they say in that movie, Apollo 13? Let's hope we've had our malfunction or whatever it is for this mission. Let's hope so. There we are, 30 kilometers RCS off, and we are now finally ready to continue our journey. So, get rid of the panels. Again, I don't know when this happened in real life, but we clearly saw images of the craft with these open sides. So now we can activate the fuel cell as well, and uh, they can relax and enjoy their journey. Five minutes away, comrades, five minutes away. So let's just make sure everything is working here. This is a very strange thing. I'm sure this is a bug, comrades. If I have a look, and I actually checked after I did my simulation or test before this episode of the moon landing. I also saw this thing has the thrust limiter turned all the way back up. But if you look at it in the VAB, it's back at 30 whatever percent we left it at. It's the decoupling that actually resets the engine to maximum thrust. That's a very, very odd bug. I should probably report that. I don't know if anyone else has found that. Then again, I'm sure they have. Uh, anyway, so just keep that in mind, comrades. Otherwise, you're going to have a very interesting ride there. It's going to be quite the kick to it. Anyway, for this we could just plan it out again. Of course, we don't have to, but we want a nice circular orbit. 29. Ah, 30, 30. There we go. So what does that give us? We just, of course, have to activate the engine first. That gives us a 51 second burn, and we should have no problem with that at all. So where is the moon? Okay, it's beneath us now. Hmm. There we go, something like that. Just lock that in, please. And let's fast forward. So again, the mod here will count down the time that we have to start the burn, but that will be about 25 and a half seconds. Uh, so we will see that one coming very easily. Everyone is happy. They're in good spirits now. They saved the mission through some careful spacewalks there. Uh, 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 don't be too... There we go. Too hasty. I'm also using the real plume mod, so uh, it should be working for all of the new engines as well. It does look nice though. So, comrades, here we are. We are around the moon at last. 
over the canyon here. I do like the higher textures here though. It looks much better. Higher definition textures. So let's see, almost there, yes, 15 seconds. Get ready. Three, two, one, and stop. This is another problem for me. It keeps following the thing right towards the end where it's almost impossible to stay, you know, to keep up with it, to stay in line with the target node. So the, the RCS keeps trying to follow it. It should be more like the, you know, when you're landing, where if you are locked to retrograde and you fall to a very low speed, it just goes back to normal stability assist. Then there's another bug, comrades. I don't know if now if this is a bug, but uh, speaking of the... Uh, what was that? Oh, yes, the, the engine resetting the thrust the whole time after you detach. Uh, another bug is with the landing legs. Now, comrades, this is a confirmed one. They do know about that. But even at a very low speed, the landing legs can explode now. This is again since 1.4.2. So we're going to have to land at a super extra soft speed or slow speed there to have a very soft landing if it blows up i'll reload so i will do a save with that because that's the last thing i want these legs are supposed to be able to absorb some of the shock but lately they have a real problem with that anyway so there we are we are now seeing that the site is in the morning light so we'll have nice long shadows there so let's plan this thing, comrades. Who is going down there? I think it has to be Jebediah. He is the pilot. So he is the one who's going to pilot the uh, lander. Of course, the CSM just has to stay in this nice orbit. So uh, no piloting required. So he is going to go down. And then, of course, we have a scientist, Bob. So Bob is going because if you have a scientist, of course, you want him to go to the moon to gather samples. So that's going to be his job. Transfer, and there is Bob. Uh, oh yes, Bill is still in the thing. He's saying, no, I'm not going to stay here, but I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Bill. You have to stay here. You're the engineer. So if anything goes wrong, you need to tell us what to do. Come on, Bob. There we go. Sometimes you have to mouse off from the thing for that to work but uh, there we are so in terms of monopropellant this upper sh upper stage should be full and it is now this gives us 30 so if any at any point we get below 30 monopropellant on the lander we're in trouble because we need that to obviously maneuver uh, during our ascent and during the approach to the docking Although, of course, we could complete the docking with the CSM. We don't have to do it with a lander. So, yes, uh, we burned a little bit more of our monopropellant, but I think we'll be okay. And, of course, our electricity is full here, so we don't have a problem with that. Let's remain attached for now. We'll detach once we get around to the Apple apps there. And there is the Earth rise or the Kerbin rise. So that would be Apollo 8 though. So still a very nice image. Though the, the planet is a bit too dark to see all the detail there. Anyway, the textures here do look very nice. That's what I like. So we're at our Apple apps and it's time to go, comrades. So I'm going to do the F5 again. We are here uh, after some struggle, but we made it. So undock, switch over and everyone is coming back online, good. So now we can extend our gears so we know that they're working. There was another comment about me trying the other ladder, you know, the yellow one that mostly works with the airplanes. But I, th I did that, I actually did the experiment just to see it for myself. But I still prefer the one that we had before, so I didn't change the ladder. But of course you could change that very easily if you wanted the other one instead. So, yes, now let's have a look. We don't have to plan this out, but it does make it easier because we actually are uh, 
slightly off our point there. We need to make an inclination change as well. Forgot about that a little bit. But that's fine. So our target is the Tutorial Mooner Roving Vehicle Skycrane Image Rover. That is a mouthful, but anyway. Set as target, so now we know where we are going. And we don't need to make that much of a change. Hmm. Yes, we will make another burn around that point, so it doesn't have to go all the way down. So let's get ourselves in position. We are almost ready to do the burn. Oh yes, I have to turn on the RCS again. And the engine there. Uh, let's just get away from here so we don't impact the CSM. Now this is too close for a burn in the real world, but for Kerbal that will be okay. Still less than desirable. Eh. Let's get a bit further away. That should be just fine. Go. Of course I didn't even need to worry about a proper maneuver node and all of that here. Now it's swinging back and forth, back and forth. That's close enough. So, get back onto the retrograde and what I then want is the windows to point down. So we can actually see, no, up actually. No, no, no. We don't want it pointing down. We want it pointing up. And the reason, of course, is when we get close to the ground, the shadow will be on that side there, towards the uh, west, since the sun is rising there in the east. Although it is actually very high up in the sky already. Hmm. We could have gone originally when I said, you know, the Terminator is relatively in the right place, but it doesn't matter. Hmm, ascending node is uh, looking really bad there, but that's because it is stationary on the ground. So I'm not going to make any other changes there. We just need to get a bit closer now. Also, if you're concerned about this sort of thing, the SA is burning your monopropellant the whole time as it swings back and forth. You can just caps lock the thing. So it uses the fine controls. That will burn much less monopropellant. And we still have 71 out of 90, so we'll be fine. It's not a problem. Hey, nerve-wracking stuff. Okay, let's get closer. Okay, let's do another burn right here. Now what on earth is that down there? Apollo lander. That must be my test one floating around there. Okay, just cut that. I don't want it to go all the way down. So let's see, when will we be over the thing? Hmm. Actually, we do want to overshoot it a little bit because we will still be making changes as we go. Close enough. Speed it up. Let's have a look. Now, of course, the moon is still rotating beneath us, so let's switch over to surface. We don't have to do it at this point, but it does help a little. Lots of fuel left. Now, I see we're heading right for that crater there, and that's not what I want, so uh, we'll just have to keep an eye on that. Impact in 70 odd seconds there. Yeah. 
There we go. Of course, it would be easy to just burn horizontal there and then cancel out all your motion and then just drop down. But uh, you know me, not always taking the easy option there. Or even the best one, I suppose. Okay, now we're going pretty straight down. Hey, hey, hey. So what do we see? Nothing yet. Strange, the stars disappear when we scroll back in. Hmm. Now at least we can look out of the windows, so uh, that's a good thing. It's just a pity I can't see too much while I'm looking at the dashboard here. Ah, well. Are we good? Are we happy? I think we need to move over a little bit. Since we do have monopropellant to burn. How are we doing on that, by the way? Uh, 62, that's fine, as long as we stay above 30. I think we're going to have to uh, just slightly pitch over here. This is why it's so good to have more fuel. If we used that thin tank, this would already have been a disaster. Oh yes, I need to still get rid of that other flag, but that's okay. Not a problem. Might as well keep it now. Not bad though, we're gonna get very close. We could do an IVA landing as well. Let's just save right here, F5. So uh, in this case, I don't know if we'll be able to see the shadow. Let's just arrest our acceleration here. So where would the shadow be? I think we'll have to rotate a little bit just to see it. And we won't see it until very close to the end. Mm. Okay, the radar altitude has kicked in. Of course I have the engineer mod telling me all this how high we are above the terrain but we can just look down there as well on the actual radar altitude but i think we're going too slowly here where is our shadow okay it's too high probably this is nerve-wracking seriously Plus, we don't want to go back up now. Uh, okay, never mind that. Just focus on the dials. Okay, we're going down too much. Okay, go back to the fine controls. Where's our shadow? Mm, okay, it's inside the crater now. Okay, what do we see? What do we see? 9 meters per second, 250 meters up. I still can't see the shadow properly. Oh, well, it doesn't matter. We don't have to. It's because the sun is too high up already. 9 meters, 9 meters is too fast. 5, 4, okay, let's try and keep it around 4 for now. Let's hope we're not landing on top of the rover. Bit less, bit less. No, 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 no. Almost there. Eee. We're drifting like crazy. We lost it, we lost it, we lost it. Uh, it's going to be a crash. 